today I'm joined by Victoria Field. She is a IFBB fitness pro competitor, a former news anchor, and she has since transitioned to a ketogenic lifestyle. You are a huge resource for the Epigenics Foundation as well as Keto Pet Sanctuary. And now you're heading the Metabolic Health Conference, which is taking place in January of 2019. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. You are a very accomplished woman. I want you to explain in your own words who you are and what you currently do now. Yeah, so um, my background is quite sort of diverse in terms of where I came from and started in my career to where I am now. But for me, I really feel like a common theme throughout all of the things I've done has been education and really a passion for helping others through providing them with resources that you know they can better their health through. So my career actually started in TV news uh, as a TV news reporter and anchor for an NBC affiliate. And even when I was in the news, I really loved those health focused stories, you know, nutrition, the latest nutrition science, what was going on in the lab, uh, because it really gave me the ability to be able to educate what was, you know, the current, the current thing in terms of health or wellness. Beyond that, I, I also had owned a fitness company with my husband and that really gave us the opportunity to really put it into people's lives and into action um, and continue to educate. Um, you know, whether it was me competing on a professional bodybuilding stage, I really feel like that platform allowed for me to, on social media, uh, communicate with people and talk about the process and help them through the process in a healthy way. And then finally, you know, Epigenics Foundation really allowed for me to head up ketogenic protocols with humans and canines and educate people through the process and, and showing them that a ketogenic lifestyle can actually be something that you can enjoy, even though you might be a part of a, a pilot study, you know, research, um, and also help educate people with their dogs too and, and why it matters what you're feeding your dog every day and how that may or may not result in some of these terrible diseases that are on the rise and canines, you know, show their ugly face down the line. So mm -hmm. um, all of those experiences through and through education really runs um, deep for me, so much so that I co-founded Metabolic Health Initiative alongside Dr. Angela Poff, who's a research scientist at the University of South Florida, works alongside Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, and uh, we really felt so passionately about this to bring Metabolic Health Summit to Los Angeles and help continue bridge that education gap between the science and the real world to not only push the research forward with ketogenic therapies um, and human optimization, but also to help the patient in, in being an advocate for themselves and understanding the information in a format where they can actually apply it in their life. So mm -hmm. my background is sort of, uh, I like to say that I feel like I've been a cat sometimes that's lived seven lives, right. um, but it's more and more, becoming more and more evident to me that for me, it's really a passion for education and helping others that has got me to this point. Yeah, you can see, looking back at your history, how everything is interconnected and one thing led to another. And it's so cool that you're being able to give people and educate people with tools so that they can empower themselves to make healthier choices. Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's going to come down from the top, the physicians, the research scientists, but it's also so important for people to take control of their own lives too, mm -hmm. but be informed with the actual science. So how did you get into all this? How did you find out about keto? That's a great question. So um, for me, my life as a competitive athlete was very different in terms of what I used to eat mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as a competitor. I was very sort of high carbs lower on the fat side and um, that's how I lived my life as an athlete. Now that said, um, once I found out about keto, it was actually through a couple of friends of mine, Ron and Shannon Penna, who founded Quest Nutrition and uh, they sat me down and talked about the ketogenic diet and how they learned about it from Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, Dr. Pierre Atia. And at the time, I was like, that sounds crazy. <laughs> High fat, low carb, I would, I would die. Yeah. <laughs> so I really, uh, when I first heard about it, was a little um, hesitant, but then really learning about its history and how over the last hundred years nearly, that it's been used as a metabolic therapy, uh, specifically with epileptic children, where drugs fail, they'll implement a ketogenic diet and it will stop seizures within 24 to 48 hours in most types of uh, epilepsy cases. So in learning that, and at the time, our dog, Sasha, uh, actually had suffered a brain injury when she was six months old, and about a, yeah, a year after that, she started to develop grand mal seizures. 
And it was right around the same time that Ron and Shannon had taken over Keto Pet and started to build that out as a place where the ketogenic diet could be validated in dogs that would otherwise not have an opportunity because they had cancer and they would be euthanized. Mm -hmm. So um, right around the same time they were establishing the protocol there, we said, why don't we give this a try with our dog Sasha because it's worked so well in humans with epilepsy. Maybe it'll work with her. And it really was unmarked territory because nobody was uh, really looking in, nobody's really looked into the diet for canines mm -hmm. um, at length to be able to stop seizures, but we're very similar in many ways, metabolically, so it, it made sense to give it a try. So we did, and um, she was able to get off all of her medication, which she was still having breakthrough seizures from, even when she was on medication. Uh, her skin changed color, her hair grew back, she was like wow. a completely different dog. So that happened, my husband had saw, seen that, and he hopped on the diet before I did, and it was right around the time where I suffered a pretty significant injury, uh, I wanted to get back on the stage because I was very close to qualifying for the Olympia the previous season and uh, it was kind of the right timing to where I said, you know what, why don't I try this to see if it helps with inflammation with some of the injuries I'm dealing wow, with. It's helped cool. my dog, it's mm -hmm. got to be able to help me and, and really the rest is history. I switched over and it was probably one of the most freeing nutrition approaches I've tried because I, as I know you know, when you're competing in fitness and, and you're constantly like, you know, you're active and all that, mm -hmm. I'm constantly thinking about my next meal. It was mm -hmm. like very planned out and, you know, I, I would otherwise get really, really hungry, not able to think straight. Yeah. Totally the opposite yeah. with the diet. So it was really hard for me to ever look back after that. Yeah, that is so incredible, your really personal story that you had. And it's so liberating when you do discover a ketogenic diet because especially when you're used to competing and you're doing the bodybuilding diet and you right. are so dependent upon your food eating every you know it feels like after an hour you're starving yeah. you know um it just it frees you of the shackles when did you realize there was a link between disease and diet probably around this time right with your dog and yeah yeah that's what i mean i i always kind of uh, felt that way. I mean, obviously, the choices that we make on a daily basis totally impact, you know, how certain diseases manifest, or maybe even certain genetic predispositions actually play out. I mean, keto has actually been able to show that it may, in fact, affect your DNA down to that level, which is really interesting. Um, so for me, though, when I saw my dog, it wasn't just like a small change. It was we can actually control her seizures through food. Mm -hmm. Like if we shift her food slightly or her water intake, I mean, just that small change can actually induce the seizure in her. So it's clearly the choices we make and what we feed her make a big difference. And I'd always known that food uh, and the choices we make make a big difference, but not to that level. And so that's where I said, okay, this may have much greater power than beyond what we're currently looking at. I mean, in terms of like the scientific community, the medical community, uh, really went back when I tried the ketogenic diet and first started, um, you know, there was a conversation around uh, disease types, metabolism and its role in uh, disease prevention and potentially human optimization, but it really wasn't as significant as say maybe you know, you get a diagnosis nine times out of 10, unfortunately food isn't really brought up into the conversation, mm -hmm. right? So, yep. um, so you're seeing that more and more that people are realizing, gosh, genetics play a role, but epigenetics and really the choices we make, make a huge difference mm -hmm. in whether or not uh, disease will actually unfold. So that was where it changed for me. That is fascinating. So you, you actually mentioned that keto can change your DNA or being on that specific kind of diet can affect your DNA. Is that what epigenics is? Is that the, the point? foundation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the goal of Epigenics Foundation was really, it was founded one, to be able to, it was, it's a nonprofit that is sort of the overarching organization to keto pet. So once we found out what we wanted to do with dogs and what we were able to find with dogs and put, putting them onto a ketogenic diet, reversing disease in some cases, uh, at that point it was really evident that we needed to start working with people. And to do that we then started partnering with oncologists in the, in the local area but all over the states really to, to be able to start uh, with some pilot studies with humans. But the, the focus really there is to uh, you know kind of determine to what extent our choices make 
a huge difference in disease, in longevity, mm-hmm. in you know whether or not we're healthy in our later years in life. Um, so you know, epigenetics. So epigenetics was born out of the word mm-hmm. epigenetics. Um, is really the study of just that. Uh, you know, all of these factors, whether it be what you eat, your environment, how you sleep, how you stress, all of those factors make a, a huge difference mm-hmm. on. Uh, how healthy you are as a person Mm -hmm. Um, but there is more work that needs to be done scientifically to continue to bring that into the conversation to where one day my hope is to really see it as you've got standard of care maybe nutrition is part of that standard Mm -hmm. of care but you've got standard of care maybe you're a cancer patient you go to your physician and they offer you chemo radiation surgery Uh, and in that same sort of breath it's also hey and there's this nutrition approach that may actually not only help you know with your tumor progression or prognosis but it might actually improve the efficacy of some of these treatments too I mean there's emerging evidence that's showing that may be the case there's a lot more that needs to be done but that's sort of the exciting direction of where epigenetics is going so you hear a lot of younger people say I can eat whatever I want and they don't really take an interest in you know having a a good balanced or you know a good diet um but to those young people what advice could you give them because it does matter you know it does matter what we eat throughout every stage of our life and it is a preventative thing nutrition so can you speak to those people and that is a great advice point yeah that's a great point um it 100 percent matters the way you fuel your body and i wish i could go back in time and tell myself that when i was you know little bit of a wild child in high school <laughs> like hey right. this is gonna right. matter later on yeah uh, you know it's really it's so important that I think at the, at the core of that though is really educating the parents yeah. because the parents really make a significant difference mm-hmm. in that child's life and the choices that they make right I mean I know from hearing your personal family story and you know a, a variety of my friends where you know if there's only certain things available uh, food makes a huge difference and I know your parents are very much uh, into the mm-hmm. health and wellness space which is amazing yeah. and uh, you know but there are, are unfortunately some families where they don't know any better but to have the giant soda with you yes. know the junk food every night or the boxed meals and things like that and I do think it comes down to the parent I mean it's so interesting I mean they're even researchers are even looking into how the mother's choices not just like during pregnancy yeah. but prior to even get getting pregnant how those choices impact the mother's gut microbiome and in turn how that impacts the child's health I mean you you think about certain things like you know uh, diabetes during pregnancy and you know that increase in blood glucose and insulin in the body what what does that mean for a child mm-hmm. uh, especially some of these children are being born and, and they're quite you know they're, they're overweight or, or whatever yeah. the case may be I think it really starts with the parent and I think I think we have to think about uh, especially even prior to having a child think about leading up to that um, what choices you're making and how that might impact your child's health and then from there you know uh, getting the right information which can be really challenging I I know there's all kinds of misinformation out there but really trying to find good resources to educate yourself about nutrition so you can then pass that to your your kid Mm -hmm. and then your kid can really understand okay this this is what I need to do to be healthier down the line now that's easier said than done and children will be children but um, I really think it starts with the parent and educating themselves and then yeah. their child. Well, that's really excellent advice. I totally agree with you. And even when you're young, if just seeing your parents making those healthy choices, you remember those things. And then all of a sudden you, you, you know, stop getting the mozzarella sticks and right. the fried food at lunch. And you're like, you know what? This doesn't make me feel good. I'm going to have a salad or, you know, right. some chicken or I want some substance in my life. Uh, I know that's what happened to me because I, I used to like the fried food in, in yeah. middle school and then in high school I was like, ah, this isn't making me feel good. Let's talk about the Metabolic Health Conference. This is a hugely important day for nutrition. You're going to be bringing the biggest minds together, the top scientists and clinicians in keto and metabolic therapies. So what is the goal with the conference and what do you hope to accomplish? That's a great question. Yeah, so uh, Metabolic Health Summit really was born out of uh, it was a scientific conference through and through when it got its start it was actually originally called the conference on nutritional ketosis and metabolic therapeutics (laughs) 
And uh, it was really an idea that came about because you know, there was a group of us at Epigenics Foundation, and then there was Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, Dr. Angela Poff, and the work they were doing in the lab at USF in Florida. We kind of teamed up to bring together, sort of it was a meeting of the minds, if you will, or at least the researchers who were doing the work, uh, who maybe felt like they were doing it alone because they're in different parts of the world, but studying the same nutritional approach or fasting and other metabolic therapies. And so we said, what if we could bring together these people in a place where they could share information and collaborate? So the first year we actually, throughout any marketing, brought in about 250 people. Um, and we really started to see there was a huge interest from the public. So patients, athletes, wanting to understand what a ketogenic approach or low carb nutrition or fasting or even metabolically targeted drugs might mean for them personally. So the second year came around, we doubled in size. It really then was evidence that we had like a conference. It was really the first of its kind when it came about. And so this year we said, okay, let's rebrand this thing. Let's really make an effort to bridge the educational gap between that science that's so important. I mean, the people on the front lines that are doing the work in the trenches, uh, preclinical, clinical studies, let's bring together those people, but let's also put it into a format and offer certain things to the, the layperson where we can bridge the education gap. Because like I mentioned before, it's really gonna come, this whole movement is gonna continue to propel forward through the physicians, the scientists, the people doing the work. But it's also going to come down to people taking control of their own life mm -hmm. and being their own advocate and then inspiring other patients or people to do the same. So it's a four day conference. Uh, it's really a ketogenic experience. It is a scientific conference through and th through, so you can really get the in-depth science if you want it. Uh, but we're also offering cooking demos and we're also offering nightly receptions with keto friendly appetizers and low carb wines and uh, you know cocktail mixers that are low carb as well and so it's you get this whole full experience I mean even down to the entertainment mm -hmm. um, you're gonna be with us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she follows a low carb <laughs> lifestyle and um, you know so Lauren's gonna be there DJing we've also got uh, Josh Perry who I know you know he's a brain tumor survivor I like to call him Thriver because he's just yeah. kicking butt at life. Yeah, and uh, he's also a pro BMX athlete. And we said, wouldn't it be really cool if we could tell his story in a unique way? And he really lost his ability for some time uh, when he was initially diagnosed. He had to go through surgery, gamma knife, all of those things. Lost his ability to compete and perform with a company called All Wheel Sports, which has been on America's Got Talent. It's the big ramp with the you know rollerbladers and the BMX riders. And he found the ketogenic diet in 2017 and is now thriving and doing phenomenally well and doing what he loves. And so we said, why don't we just, why don't we build a ramp? Actually, he came to me and said, you guys want to like build a ramp in the ballroom and I can so compete cool. with or perform with all wheel sports. And we said, that sounds crazy and I love it. <laughs> so <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's really down to every aspect of the experience. Like you'll get a ketogenic dining culinary experience there to like, actually witnessing how this has changed people's lives to you know such a level of extreme right but it's really going to be a, a full four day ketogenic experience where you'll, you'll walk away learning a lot um, but also having a great time and it's just right here in long beach in, in los angeles january 31st to february 3rd so it's going to be a lot of fun i am so excited i can't wait to see that all and just being around, you know, like-minded people that are that are open and wanting to learn and better their health. I mean, that's that's who I want to be around all the time. So awesome. I'm super excited. Yeah. Um, so who exactly besides Josh? Who, who's going to be at the Metabolic Health Summit? <laughs> yeah, just me and Josh. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Just you and Josh and me. <laughs> and her. That's it. It's gonna be fun. No, I'm kidding. Um, we have some really incredible uh, speakers. Well, first of all, uh, Dr. Angela Poff and Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, my two co-hosts in Metabolic Health Summit. They will be there speaking as well. Um, but we've got some incredible minds from, uh, gosh, Drew Manning to uh, we've got Aubrey Marcus, who's really I think one of the kings of human optimization, if you will to some of your really incredible scientists, Thomas Seafried, who really is the godfather of the metabolic so cool. theory of cancer, to Dr. Jeff Volick, uh, Dr. Sarah Hallberg of Verta Health. I mean, we've got really a great lineup of speakers that can speak to a variety of metabolic diseases and how the ketogenic diet may serve as a great um, application in conjunction with standard of care or even by itself in some cases. But also we're talking about uh, uh, human optimization and 
athletes. I mean, how to optimize your own life through maybe using a low carb approach, but really Metabolic Health Summit, we changed that name because like I was telling you earlier, there are so many factors that impact our metabolic health at the end of the day, beyond just what we eat, right? So sleep, stress, gut microbiome, um, all of those factors make a big, a big difference. So our goal is to really bring in all the top experts that can speak to a variety of therapies involving uh, metabolic health. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, we can also bring in the influencers who, who've sort of experienced it themselves mm -hmm. and provide a platform that that can help educate people and uh, really give people I guess beyond just the information the inspiration to kind of make a make a change in, in their life as well so it encompasses far more than just food and we really want to have an evidence-based conversation not a you're doing right, keto right, you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. this way is to do keto, this way right. don't do keto. Right. Everybody's gonna have a preference on how that yeah. fits in their life, but let's provide the current evidence around metabolic health, inclusive of nutrition, and see where the conversation takes us and where the science takes us as well. Yeah, I think that sounds so awesome and well-rounded and inspiration is everything. If you have that little spark, it ignites the fire and then you, know, you, you follow through with whatever you're trying to do. And I think this is so important for, for inspiring people. You have a lot of great names coming to this event. I'm oh, really yeah. excited. So why isn't it called the Ketogenic Health Conference? Why is it called the Metabolic Health Summit? Yeah, so uh, definitely a good question. And uh, you know, we're really focused on bringing sort of the evidence and the scientific research and the, the, the work that's being done, whether it's in the lab or outside of the lab, preclinical, clinical, uh, really bringing that to the forefront and having a conversation around all factors that impact metabolic health. While a lot of the talks at the conference will be focused on the ketogenic diet, ketosis and metabolic therapies and how that makes a difference because it's really something that's been sort of through and through over the last 100 years, that's what's been used as a metabolic therapy, specifically with epileptic children like we talked about. Um, but we really are uh, dedicated to following where the science takes us and to talking about all factors that impact metabolic health. So to us, it made sense to have sort of more of an overarching umbrella name where we could include things that extend far beyond what we're eating, but maybe how we're stressing, sleep, breathing. I mean, there's so many factors that yeah. impact our day-to-day -day health and happiness that we really wanted to make it something that could allow for us, you know, to go where the science leads uh, when it comes to optimizing health. So. Right. Yeah, it, there's a bigger picture. It's not just about keto. I think people get really hung up or, you know, obsessed with that. And there's, there's so much more to it. There's mm -hmm. so many other factors that are going to affect our health and longevity. What is the most important thing for people to understand about their metabolisms? That is a good question. About their metabolisms. Well, first of all, there's everybody's metabolism. Everybody's body is totally different. There's really not like a one size fits all, I think, for a nutrition approach for everybody. So, you know, I think when there's so much buzz going around about keto, which is great, it's important to recognize and understand that you have to find what works best for you, your body, your life, your metabolism, because we all have different metabolic rates and we all have different activity levels and all of those things. So taking that into consideration. Um, two, I mean, I really feel like there needs to be more of a focus on metabolism when it comes to looking at both human health and disease, mostly disease, uh, and understanding that how we, you know, metabolize food, how we, uh, how we live out our daily lives, dramatically impacts, you know, some of those disease states. And you know, while there needs to be more work done in terms of prevention. Uh, I really do feel that metabolism is going to be sort of at the core of a lot of the research moving forward when it comes to figuring out how we can not only prevent disease but maybe even reverse it. So I think everybody really needs to take it with a, a level of seriousness, what they're e eating, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also be kind to themselves in the process knowing yes. that everybody's so different yes. and there's not one size fits all for anybody. Yes, I agree 100% and you can't compare yourself